Hi, it's Mike Stevenson here. Today in this video, we're going to talk about logic apps versus Azure functions. Okay, so there's a lot of similarities between Azure functions and logic apps. I think it's a really common um, sort of this versus that question that comes up for a lot of organizations. So if we start with logic apps, we've, we've done a couple of videos in the series so far um, talking about what logic apps is. So I'll, I'll kind of touch on this briefly, target audience for Logic Apps is usually going to be developers who want to integrate systems. So let's say we're building a workflow that um, gets messages from somewhere and it'll orchestrate across APIs or connectors to certain SaaS or line of business applications to process that message. Functions is um, very similar. It's aimed at developers who need a host for relatively simple code which may sometimes have integrated dependencies. So the the ability to connect to systems is a feature of both applica both technologies. Um, but typically, developers may have scenarios with functions where there's not an integration at all. It's much more about, I've got a piece of code, I need somewhere to run it. Now, if we think of the key use cases, so Logic Apps is all about this... Um, process automation and system to system workflow functions is all about somewhere to put my custom code for it to execute and sometimes you have people who build api backends on functions or you may build um, in that custom code sort of bullet point one you may have things like i've got a small background process that needs to execute some background job um, and, and things like that so it's really um, code implementation versus integration scenarios. Now, key differences between the two, um, Logic Apps is designed with a visual designer that could be in the Azure portal, it could be in VS Code, it could be in Visual Studio. There's a couple of different flavors of Logic Apps we'll touch on in a minute, but they, they come down to the same thing. The idea is that you're gonna visually design your workflow. Now, Logic Apps, um, they can be short running processes, they can be longer running processes. Um, you do have all of these connectors that you can leverage as well for cloud connectors. So you can, um, you know, maybe you want a Dropbox connector or something like that. It's designed to make it easy to, to leverage these from your workflow. Now, functions, um, on the other hand, it's so functions is really code based. That's the key difference, is probably the, this point here versus this point here. Do you want to build your solution? visually in a ui or do you want to write code to do with that that's really what the key difference between the two is now functions um usually they would be shorter running but you do have the ability to have durable functions for longer running support now this is where it starts getting complex so really um here we need to bring in the fact that you've got two types of um of logic apps so you've got logic app consumption and you've got logic app standard now consumption's really um like workflow as a service kind of scenario so you're abstracted almost completely from the host that the, the workflow runs on you just deploy your workflow and it'll execute for you logic app standard on the other hand sits inside the function runtime which then would sit on top of a compute node something like an app service plan on azure so when we say logic apps um, are made for long, longer running processes, but functions more often than not are smaller, really what that comes down to is um, is the, the kind of durable um, workflow engine that's within the function runtime. So really with a logic app, you've got steps in your workflow that are being persisted to storage, which can then be rehydrated and further executed. So it's similar to... to durable functions really when, when you get down to that lower level but i think typically um but certainly in my experience anyway i've found much more um use of companies doing longer running process in logic apps versus durable functions mainly because in when it comes to the support angle you um you know over here you get this visible uh, visual run history which you don't really get with functions which makes it easier to support and troubleshoot your logic app I think that's that's one of the key differences in how people use the support for long government stuff you can definitely do durable functions but you're having to do a lot of the hard work yourself now in logic apps um 
we said you've got a visual designer, functions are more code-based. This opens, opens up the ability with functions to have different kinds of language support. So often you'll see people do Node functions, c -sharp, PowerShell, Python. There's a lot more languages that people could use. So you might have an admin write a function in PowerShell, for example, whereas with Logic Apps, you're really in that designer area. Now, in terms of overlap, I've mentioned that um, standard Logic App Standard uses the function runtime under the hood, and Logic App Standard also uses the built-in connectors that functions comes out of the box. So really, this bit here about function bindings and this bit about built-in connectors, it's really the same thing. So with a function, you can declare a binding which allows you to to send data to the binding. So maybe it's a service bus binding that'll write a message to a queue. Likewise, you have that ability to use that binding via a visual connector. Um, and that, you know, that's really the same thing for being able to connect to certain systems. Now, there is a limit to how many bindings there are. So I, I can't remember the number off the top of my head, but the difference between up here, you've got these cloud connectors and down here, you've got these built-in connectors. There's there's a significant number of cloud connectors that Logic Apps can leverage, which opens up a whole load of other systems for you. Now, if we get like into the lower level details, there are ability, uh, because of the function runtime, you've got these service provider connectors where you can kind of write your own code for a connector using the adapter framework from... Uh, that kind of supports this model. And that means you can build your own code having a built-in connector that can be used by both of these. Um, so, you know, as we go down and down in the, the level of detail, we look at this, there's, there's more complexity. It's not just as simple as, you know, visual designer code and, the, and there's, there's significant differences. There's a lot of overlaps because of the fact Logic App Standard runs on the function runtime now. In terms of, um, you know, with functions, we've got a number of different hosting models here. Um, you know, Logic Apps really has that consumption, which is a, a kind of per execute type model where you don't have, you don't really see the host. Standard runs on usually on an app service, but it's pretty much anywhere you can host the function runtime. There, there are some support things you've got to be aware of with that, but the physical ability to run it in the function runtime means you can run it locally and usually it would be on a specific type of app service plan now functions you've got this um the ability to have a, a purely paper execute serverless function which is kind of the equivalent of a logic app consumption um, i guess it would be nice if the names were consistent there i guess might make it a bit easier um to, to relate the two but um, those are kind of paper execute functions but if you have it on an app service plan you would pay for your functions on a per hour basis so that would be the same as logic app standard and then um, and then you've got a few other options there so really the, the pricing although the pricing's not exactly the same in terms of the cost per execute um so, you know so with the logic app you pay per action within your workflow the function you pay per function executes so there are some slight differences in the amount you would pay but the model of how you would be billed is very similar so it's either per hour if you're on a on a plan or it's per execute if it's if it's more serverless um i think i've covered pretty much everything there at, at the level we want to talk in this session about um so hopefully you know i get across that there's some complexities you need to be aware of as you get lower in the weeds, but at a higher level, functions is code based, logic apps is designer based. Um, you've got the, you know, the kind of different use cases. Logic apps is purely around integration scenarios. Functions can do integration, probably at a at a more limited range, but it also is used for lots of other things where you just want some code to execute. I guess um, a couple of other points to maybe note. Um, so things like VNet integration, because that Logic App standard runs on the function runtime, it opens up the scenarios where both of them can run on a VNet um, with private endpoints and VNet integration. So you've got a lot of the things Logic App consumption didn't used to have for VNet capability that it can have in standard because of um, functions runtime. Okay, let's have a look at a, an example scenario then. And what I want to talk about here 
is why we made some of the decisions we made. So the first thing to call out is in this, this architecture, which you might recognize from the first video. So here we've got um, a consumption logic app. Here we've got a function. Here we've got a function. So these run on Elastic Premium Plan. And these, um, I mean, to be honest, in the, in the example architecture that I implemented um, with the customer, the, these are all consumption uh, logic apps. But for argument's sake, for the video, um, let's say that this one's standard. This one's um, consumption. Slide from the next video, peek view there for everybody. My pen's not working too great there. And we'll say that this one is um, standard as well. Okay, so if you remember how what we had in this scenario is we had data from the plant was coming in. We've got tens to hundreds of thousands of messages a day hitting the event hub at various times. And we had a function app that listens to those events and forwards them to service bus. And we, I guess we had another, in one of the other slides, we had another solution down here taken from service bus into our data platform that also used a function. But in this scenario, everything that I talk about over on this function app was equally relevant in that other part of the diagram, if you saw video one. So we run this on a, f a function app here. It was a single function. Now, the good things here is we've got out-of-the-box bindings for event hubs. So we can just configure the function app with a connection string um, to be able to talk to the event hub. And likewise, we can do the same for the service bus. That leverages those function bindings. Um, so we're not having to write lots of custom code there. Now, that, that's a good thing about functions is those bindings take away some of the the boilerplate code you would write for connecting to certain systems and then what would happen is we'd be reading in um, data with a bind and it would trigger instances of this function to run they would do some processing of the data just to do a slight transform and then it would promote properties right at the service bus now the good thing about here is we had a number of function apps so when you're building an architecture that covers lots of different scenarios um, the decision needs to be a, a bit more strategic as well than just should I use a function or should I use a logic app for this one piece? You, you might want to think of the bigger picture. Now, at the time we built this, um, logic app standard, when we did this bit over here, wasn't available. Um, I'll talk about what we might have done if it was available. But here, the key thing is we've got um, on an Elastic Premium plan, we can post multiple function apps that can run at quite high scale for relatively low cost. Um, because we're getting a significant number of messages um, and the performance of um, the serverless one, it may not have been the best choice to pick um, a serverless function. So that Elastic Premium plan just give us a guaranteed sort of performance level a fairly static cost regardless of how much load there was and peaks and troughs of load and that kind of thing um, and, it, and it was just a really easy way to implement with not very much code this feature here now we couldn't have used a logic app consumption here because there would have been quite a few actions to implement that small amount of code that we needed so here a function was definitely a better choice than a, um, a logic app standard the cost would have been a lot lower um, however, if Logic App Standard had been around, there would have been some advantages of using a Logic App Standard because we would have got the run history. So here, one of the challenges we get with a function is we can integrate with things like, let's say we have an App Insights here. So the, the telemetry from the function app goes to App Insights. So we can use that for support now, but under extreme load, you might have um, problems where you have sample and needs to come into play. Now, I think at our level of load, that doesn't really kind of cause us an issue. We can be fairly reliant on that telemetry data. But um, if we had a logic app standard, 
we would have had the ability to do things like um, resubmit would have been once if there'd been an error we could have just resubmitted the logic app we can't resubmit a function that's one of the big differences um, the second thing would have been the run history so if there was a one that errored and we wanted to troubleshoot we'd have a visual run history we could see and we could see what the data looked like so and, and then logic app standard running on an app service plan we would have been able to scale it um, and get the performance throughput that we couldn't have got with logic app consumption so it's so like if we were revisiting this decision today we may have chosen to use logic app standard versus um versus a function app but but to be honest you know it, it's kind of what you prefer at that point really there there's there's a couple of small advantages and disadvantages in each i guess um one of the things might might be to consider what your team's comfortable with as well so if you've got a team who are very comfortable with functions don't have much logic app experience there's a, there's some risk in that decision and likewise if you've got a team who are comfortable with logic apps and less so with functions there's there's um pros and cons there too now at the time we looked at this interface here um standard again wasn't around so we we had hundreds of thousands of messages coming through here they would go to different interfaces and this one here we said was the loaded rail car so we might get 10 rail cars a day get a loaded rail car notification so we're not worried because we hit service bus we're not worried about massive load on this logic app we're only going to process probably 10 messages a day so um great use case for consumption so here um, that lightweight logic app that just runs when we want it to run a bit like an uber for integration i guess in a way so when we when we need one because a rail car's been loaded it'll run it'll do its job it'll push them receive a message from service bus transform it and then output it to service bus over here now for us um one of the things we you know could we have used a function here yes we could um it would have been written in code versus the visual designer we would have lost the run history um, that a logic app has we would have lost the resubmission so there would be two big disadvantages there um, but i think also you would have had to have had a function app for that code to live in so we probably would have had to spin a new function app up um, which has a, a bit more of an overhead for a number of things but here it was just a really lightweight perfect logic app consumption use case now one of the things that we do have to think about is this logic app consumes our, uh, our conversion api so this conversion api was a reusable asset where we have apim sitting in front of some functions where we implement some code for lightweight scenarios so we had a couple of functions that would do things like convert weights from um, kilos to pounds and vice versa do some product code validation um, do some i trying to think what some of the others were now um, just various common conversions where we had conversion factors the business defined and we needed some central place all of our solutions could use so here we've got this range of about a dozen functions that do different things and this is a perfect use case for azure functions so we've got um, functions that get executed over http they sit behind api management and we just expose them so this logic app can call them but then other interfaces that we might build can call them as well and then um, we implemented them with a bit of C sharp code so we can do some nice unit testing, um, lightweight, low cost. Um, one thing to note is we do have this Elastic Premium plan that we already had over here. So that's where we deployed it onto Elastic Premium to reuse the cost that we're already spending for other function apps. Um, so we didn't really have to pay any more money for the function app because we put it on an existing plan. Whereas if we if we had it on the serverless plan you could argue it doesn't get used enough to really justify it you know if it, if it was the only function app we had we wouldn't have put it on elastic premium we would have just put it on serverless and paid per execute but because we've got an elastic premium we put it on there because we have put you know loads of capacity on it okay so um next up we'll talk about this one here so we've got 10 rail cars a day coming in um they come to this interface which is logic app consumption um 
lowish load we get the data we so we go into sap so we've got sap connectors from logic app so it's a, straight away that puts us in a great place for logic app um versus a function because of the connector support because of the run history because of the resubmission um consumption versus standard you could have used either depending on what you're most comfortable with um, for our, at our point in time, you know, as I mentioned earlier, all of these were consumption. So I think I'll just leave that one saying it was consumption. Um, we'll talk about where we might have used standard in the other ones. So here, um, here we've got one where let's say we wanted to use standard. Why might we? So some of the some of the challenges with standard that come into play is this logic app here was just isolated on its own, does a job. You don't have to worry much about it other than that it exists in a resource group. So if we wanted to put this one here in standard, the question is what other workflows would you want to put in that? So here again, we you know the reason to choose Logic App over functions was a bit of a no-brainer. The you know just the run history, the resubmission, the load profile makes it, you know, for, for consumption versus functions it fully supported consumption for logic apps anyway but if we were choosing standard there wouldn't be enough load to make us um, switch from a, a logic app to a function um, however if we were doing standard that question comes right we've got with it with a um, consumption logic app I have I can have like you know all of these would be individual workflows the difference is with a um, the standard we've basically got this app this logic app that has workflows inside it okay so let's say there's there's half a dozen here now the deployment footprint for a, a logic app consumption i don't really need to worry about i um you know i just deploy it and azure takes care of that all for me with a logic app standard i need to think about the workflows that are in here so how many do I put in this logic app standards? A really important question. I wouldn't have span up unless I really was forced to a logic app standard for one workflow, because I think um, unless you've got the load profile that justifies it, I think you're making your life difficult. But if we had multiple workflows, so let's say I might choose to group this one and this one together because they're dealing with rail cars or something. I might then start having four, five, six, seven logic apps in this app, and I would deploy them as a unit. And then they could leverage the Dataverse connector. They could leverage, you know, they could use inline code or in inline maps to, um, you know, to do liquid and dot uh, XSLT transforms and that kind of thing. That that would be where there would be some advantages coming into play on standard versus consumption here. But um, I could, you know, in, the, in this particular scenario, I could choose all of them. Um, I could choose standard or consumption, but I think these are definitely better, um, better use cases for logic apps than they are for functions. Now, I'm kind of feeling that in this video, as I've talked through this scenario, I've got a little bit into the discussion of the two flavors of logic apps, which I really wanted to keep as a separate video. And I'll, I'll, come on to that again more in, in a future video but hopefully um this video gives a good picture of the design choices of where we've chosen functions versus logic apps so here it was really about leveraging resubmit uh, run history the cloud connectors they were perfect for logic apps here we chose um functions because of the load requirement here we chose functions because we wanted some simple a HTTP based um, API backend. I think they, these are the best use cases that highlight the where you would use one versus the other. So thank you very much for listening. Um, have a great day, everybody.